My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the twelve, Fear no one. Nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, nor secret that will not be made known. What I say to you in the darkness, speak in the light. What you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Are not two sparrows sold for a small coin? Yet not one of them falls to the ground without my father's knowledge. Even all the hairs of your head are counted. So do not be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Everyone who has acknowledged me before others, I will acknowledge before my heavenly Father. But whoever denies me before others, I will deny before my heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. So today's gospel is a small passage from a larger uh, context that Jesus is sending out the disciples uh, on a mission. He said, you know, I've done my part, now I want you to go out and preach the gospel. And he's given them probably what has to be the worst pep talk ever. Um, because he's saying, listen, you're going to go out of these villages, they're not going to be nice to you. They're not going to be kind or considerate, they're going to kick you out, they're going to yell at you, scream at you and all kinds of difficulties you're going to face as you preach this gospel that I've given to you. Um, and then he comes to this part where he encourages them. And he says something I think we need to hear. And he says it three times, so I think it's important. In different ways he says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. So do not be afraid. It is a tough world to live in today to be a Christian. It's not like in the old days. In this day and age, you have to actively work hard to be a Christian in the world today because it is, ultimately, we live in a culture that is against us in the sense that it is a different type of atmosphere, what they'd like to call skepticism, where people are like wondering and questioning, and that's all fine and good. But in the end, when we proclaim that gospel, we will meet hostility. It will be difficult. And that's the same thing that the disciples faced when they went out and preached Jesus to the various towns that he sent them to. A difficulty and a difficult time. But they were not discouraged. Jesus told them to have heart and courage. That if they preach with integrity, it will come at a cost, but he will give them strength and courage. And I was thinking of an example in modern times as to who would be a person of integrity that we could look to. I thought of Pope John Paul II. He was a man who believed deeply in the faith. He worked diligently, effortlessly, always traveling, going everywhere in the world to proclaim the same message, that Jesus loves them, that Jesus loves all people. He never watered it down. He never lost his integrity. He never compromised who he was. And yet, if you remember his funeral, it was one of the most amazing things you could ever see. Thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people came out to see this man of integrity, this man who stood for something and believed in it and lived it his entire life. He paid the price for his integrity and he had the courage of his convictions to live out his faith. And we need to have that same courage and conviction to speak those words, as Francis said, Pope Francis, the truth in love, to be truthful and to do it in a loving way. I can't think of a better pope than Pope John Paul II who did that. Never compromised, always stood up for what was right in the face of many difficulties, was a man of honor and integrity that we can look up to. And you know, we heard in our first reading from the prophet Jeremiah, and he's talking about all this woe. He's 
he's told to grow and be a prophet, and it's always negative. He's like, I never get to see anything good. But you know, for some reason, the church skipped, I think, the most important part. So I want to read it to you, because right before he gives this paragraph that we heard, he says something I think we all need to hear, because he's, he's frustrated. He's like, I've been preaching what you told me to preach, and nobody's listening. I can't get through to anybody. It's like pounding my head against the wall. And so he says some, he says this, he's speaking to the Lord. He says, you have seduced me, Lord, and I let myself be seduced. You were too strong for me, and you prevailed. All day long, I am the object of laughter. Everyone mocks me. Wherever I speak, I must cry out. Violence and outrage I proclaim. The word of the Lord has brought me reproach and derision all day long. I say I am not to mention him. I will no longer speak his name. But then it is as if a fire is burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. I grow weary holding it back, and I cannot. In other words, he doesn't want to be a prophet. He doesn't want to do this work. It's not what he wants. And yet he has a fire in his heart that cannot stop him from proclaiming God's word. That's what we need to have. We need to know that there's going to be resistance to who we are and what we want to say, but we have to have that burning fire in our hearts to know that God's love will give us the strength to live out the Christian values in a society that is not on our side, that wants us to compromise every day who we are, but God will give us the courage and the strength. He will put that fire in your heart and give you the love that you need to persevere through these difficult times and to live out the Christian life. It is hard in our day and age, but it is not impossible. God will give us the strength. And he's done that in giving us the Eucharist. He's given us the Eucharist so that we can be nourished, to have his body and blood, the strength and the courage to face the trials of our lives and the trials of our world. We are called to be just like Jeremiah, to be just like the 12 disciples, called to be prophets. At your baptism, you were baptized to be a prophet, to live out the Christian faith, not only in your actions, but in your words. So I'd encourage you this week to think about how you can live that out, how you can proclaim in your workplace and in your family life and in your personal relationships the love of Jesus Christ in your heart and proclaim it to those you meet. That's the challenge of our day, for us to live as Christians, to go out and do that. And we have a perfect example in our scriptures of someone who was the perfect disciple. And it wasn't any of the 12 disciples. They were all uh, abandoned Jesus at his moment of need. Who was there? It was Mary. You know, Mary at the Annunciation, the angel comes to her and says, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. And what's her reaction? Her reaction is confusion, and she's scared. So what does the angel say? The same thing that Jesus said to his disciples. Do not be afraid. And she is convinced that she is to be the mother of the Son of God. And so she says, Behold, I am a handmaid of the Lord. May it be done unto me according to your word. We can take those words into our hearts. We can make those words, that pledge, our pledge. We can make that our effort this week. And you know, she never knew how it was going to work out. She had no clue. She just was like, okay, you've asked me to do this, Lord. I can accept. And so she accepts it. And what comes with that acceptance? Because she's thinking, I'm sure, just like the 12 disciples, just like all of Israel, that the Messiah is going to come and he's going to throw out the Romans and reestablish David's kingdom, and Israel is going to be the power in charge once again. I'm sure she had those same thoughts. She thought, wow, what a privilege, what an honor that my son will sit on the throne in Jerusalem. So she probably had no idea all the pain and suffering that that yes was going to cause her. And yet, in John's Gospel at the end, she's the one left standing. As it says, Standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother. And when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. 
Mary is a perfect example for us to say yes to God, to do the best we can every day to say yes, I will do your will as best I can, despite the hardships and the difficulties. None of us will face the difficulties and the hardships that Mary faced, but we will face challenges, and we can look to her as an example of how we can say yes every day of our lives and know the love of God in our hearts. And if it had ended at the cross, it would have been a Shakespearean tragedy. But we know that it doesn't end at the cross. We know that Jesus rises from the dead. And where does he go? He goes to the locked upper room where the disciples and Mary are staying. And his first words are, where were you people? You all ran away and abandoned me. I am going to dump you and find better disciples. <laughs> That's not what he says. What does he say? He says those simple words, peace be with you. Let those same words ring in your heart when you face difficulty, when you are struggling to live out your faith. Hear those words echoing in your heart. Peace be with you. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son, Son of God, born of the He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us offer our prayers and petitions to our Heavenly Father. For all who are called to lead the church, working to evangelize all who seek the truth, we pray to the Lord. For those called to government service, striving to lead in ways of peace and justice, we pray to the Lord. For all who long for honorable employment and strive for a living wage, we pray to the Lord. For family members who serve as caregivers for the young, the elderly, and the infirm, we pray to the Lord. For this parish community, as we do our best, to reflect the face of Christ to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those who are presently serving in the military, for those who have died, and for our present veterans, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leader in Christ, Patty Freund, that she continue to guide young people to Christ in her new faith community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish seminarian, Ryan Courtney, our religious sister, Maria Christie Delaney, Bob Warner, and Jerry Hodson, who are in formation for permanent deacon. May the awareness of our prayers and concern for them give them strength and grace as they respond to God's call. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved deceased, who has passed on to the Father this week, Brian Bigelow, Alex Yalda, Carol Gangi, and especially for John Hartigan, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own prayers and concerns, which we offer now in prayerful silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Father, Father's Day novenas in our chest on the altar, that the Lord will bless them and keep them safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, we ask you to hear these prayers, confident you'll answer them, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The ushers will now accept our offerings. At the appropriate time, our gifts of bread, wine, and treasure will be brought forward by Eugene, Joseph, and Matthew Diaz. Our preparation hymn is in spirit and song, number 184. I could sing of your love forever. Spirit and song, number 184. 